I'm not so sure your intentions were pure When you came back to tell me you were gone Maybe your words would be better understood If you hadn't said them at all Angelina, we said we'd break it off clean Now you're trying to make the moment linger And all that flame don't matter much anyway Why so quick to p -p point the finger? What you think I said I'm not sure you realize that what you heard It's not what I meant See anybody who's not thoroughly confused They just don't know what's going on Angeline He said we'd break it up clean now you try to make the moment linger All that blame Don't matter much anyway Why so quick to p -p point the finger? Crystal clear in my confusion You came along and blew my cobwebs out I was left without a thread to cling to Angelina, you said we'd break it up clean now you're trying to make the moment linger And all that blame Don't get us anything anyway Why so quick to pop a point the finger? composer, writer, uh, sometimes actor, stuff like that. Oh, uh, not really, I do all kinds of different things. Oh, no, I'm full-time in the arts, if that's what you're asking, yes. When the time comes, I'll expand it. I'll expand it. <laughs> Physically, I'm just going to fill the room. <laughs> um, well, when it comes to research, and even writing, it's an ongoing process, so I'm, I'm constantly writing songs. And then I might develop a theme between three or four of them that look like an album. And then I might come to a point where I have to research more to expand on that idea. But it's an ongoing process, I'm constantly writing. It's not like, oh, let's do an album, okay, now I start writing again. So uh, research is also ongoing. But it's in everything, it's in, in life, in reading, in movies. Um, Anything really, uh, inspiration comes everywhere. Um, well, the biggest thing I think for any artist is trying to balance what you hear in your head and make it into the real world and then convince people that it deserves money because uh, that's the hard thing. In order to, to survive, you have to make money. But that's not the aim when you set out to make something, you're just trying to create what's in your head in the real world. 
So that's probably the single big biggest challenge is is, is um, convincing people that your path is worthy of their attention. Uh, different every time. Sometimes it's just one phrase, one line that will stick around in my head. Uh, sometimes it's a piece of music. Sometimes it's both, just a chorus or just a line with a melody. Um, sometimes, uh, rarely, admittedly, very rarely, I'd sit down to the whole song there. Um, sometimes I'll write a whole page of lyrics. I mean, I had one idea for a song that was on not the last album, the album before that, because of you, and I wrote 47 verses. It was kind of obsessive. I mean, used three. Well, two and a half, actually, if I'm honest. So that was a, a case of the lyrical idea being stronger, but often it's the other way around. I have a melody or a chord sequence, and I just know I'll get something out of it eventually, and I'll keep working at it. No. <laughs> Apparently not, no. <laughs> Cameraman 2 says no. Um, generally not, no, because I, I write non-stop. I don't think, I'm not one of those superstitious people who believes in writer's block or having to have purple pencils on my desk, even though that's nice, nice, nice purple pencils. Um, I, I just constantly write, so if I have an idea when I'm walking down the street, I'll put it on my phone. Um, if I'm on a train, I'll use a notebook, I'll use everything and anything to document it. So I'm not, I, I, I think it's more the opposite. Maybe the only strange habit I have is that I write all the time. Yeah, pretty much uh, something every day. Between, I'm working on a novel, so I'm writing, um, I try to do a thousand words of that five days a week. But then music is ongoing as well, so I don't really consider on and off days. Because if I take an off day, my mind wanders and I start writing. So yeah, pretty much every day. <laughs> I, I guess it does, I'm still learning. I, I mean, honestly, it's been a case of adapting all I know from writing song into writing novels and then learning what I don't know. Um, you know, I ask advice of other writers and people who, who have been at it for longer. So the approach, I mean, the first one was just trying to expand on how I write because when, when I'm writing a song, I'm trying to find that one line that will describe a whole room or ten different things and have ten different approaches. But I in a novel situation, it's um, quite novel. In a novel situation, it's like um, you want to describe the room in detail to create it for people. So it's a different approach. And I, I'm guessing and learning as I go along. So yeah, the approach has changed because now I feel like it's more guesswork. <laughs> Run! <laughs> what would I recommend? I, I, I think like any, anybody who wants to be an artist, y you just have to read, um, experience the arts, read books, read everything. Because you can't make music based on music it gets very stale very quickly, so you have to just experience as much as you can um, and take in as many influences as you can. It's not that they'll all come out, but at least you're learning and moving yourself forward. So maybe the best advice is to get beyond what you know, get beyond your comfort zone as quickly as possible and make that your habit. One thing I know now, probably that I actually want to do it, you know, still. Because um, when you start, you don't know anything, and there's no, uh, at, at least for contemporary music, there's no official career path. So you, it's not like you can, uh, the people who are successful are very far removed from you. So you don't really know how it works out and how it happens as you get older, what do you do? So now I know that, but that's just from experience. You know, how do you become a musician? You do it by keeping on the path, keeping on, keep, keep on keeping on, as Dylan would say. Whereas when you start, you're not so sure. Now it's more, okay, the more music you make, the more you are a musician, the more you progress down the path. And at the start, that's not obvious at all. There's no signposts or ideas for that. Uh, well, I was thinking about this question, actually. Uh, everyone wants to know. And, um, I, I, I really do love like uh, um, commercial artists who are willing to still just follow their muse. And so like Neil Young would be a great example. You know, he's had hit albums, he's had hit songs. But that never appears to be his aim. But then the more I thought about it, the more I realized the people I, that inspire me are the people who are still at it despite not having that level of commercial fame because it's, it's a lot harder. Because the doubt is there. And the doubt hasn't gone away. You know, you, you're looking in different places for that affirmation of your path. So, and I think of like friends of mine like Eamon O'Connor from Lucky Bones or Bobby McBride, 
um, they're still writing and they're still out there and they're doing their very best to create art. I think that's a lot harder without the obvious affirmations because you have to rely all on yourself even after all that time. The best money ever spent? <laughs> the best money ever spent on songwriting. Um, there's a great book and I, I would recommend it to almost anybody in the arts, um, even though it's about songwriting. It's, it's by Paul Zollo, and it's called Songwriters on Songwriting. And it's 52 interviews. I'd love to sell it now, so I'll put it here, shouldn't I? Um, but uh, 52 interviews with songwriters, and some of them I knew, some of them really obvious, but it's just about songwriting. And the main thing I learned from it was that there is actually no approach. It's, it's so individual and personal. And again, as I said, it, it's great for any artist because it shows the personality and, and what you put into it is really the only original thing. Because as they've said a, a million times, everyone's heard it, you know, it's all been done before, except for the person. So I think that book is actually pretty priceless in that way. And because it's broken into interviews, it's not like you have to read the whole thing. You can pick it up and read pieces of it. And it's easy to digest. So it's probably the best. It's quite a big book but it's a good investment.